Seth and I were just talking on the drive up here. We have drawn out so much deep comb this year. We were kind of guessing. We were guessing it's probably up around a thousand boxes or so. That's quite a lot of money in anybody's book. Especially mine. But it'll pay off later. And actually, we've actually been talking about changing our business model a little too. Might run a little more for hunting next spring. A little less for splitting and selling bees. But local honey has become really valuable in just the last couple years. Especially in our retail store. Now that our retail store is getting so busy, um, lo our own local honey that's made right in this area is becoming very important. People come in expecting it. They're willing to pay a good price for it. So um, in the past, I've used splitting bees and selling colonies and selling nukes as a guaranteed source of income. But we finally arrived at the place where I've always said, like i got to back up, I've always counseled new beekeepers that they need to diversify their income and have several avenues of income to make sure they can pay truck payments and land payments and stuff like that in a bad year. In years past, I've always used making more bees as a way of diversifying my income in case it was a bad honey production year. I think that in our area, and in my case, honey production over a 10-year average probably outpaces selling bees as a profitable way of making money. But in the past, I've not been able to ride that up and down wave, good year, bad year. I had to have some money every year to make payments. And uh, I finally arrived at a place where almost everything is paid for. All the trucks are paid for. I own a huge portion of the inventory in our building, which is a lot, a couple million dollars worth of inventory. Uh, my land payments on my uh, big building are, that, that, that's probably about two-thirds paid for. The smaller building, our wood shop, it's paid for. Our house is paid for. All of these second mortgage loans and credit cards, everything I've done over the past to try to pull this whole thing off, it's all paid for now. The reason I'm sharing all that is I finally arrived at a place where I can, I think I can ride the wave now. And I don't have to have that guaranteed income every year of selling bees. So I actually think in the long term average that I will make more money uh, running a little heavier towards honey and a little lighter towards making bees. That doesn't mean I'm not going to sell bees anymore. I really like making bees. It's my favorite thing actually. But um, uh, I think I'm going to concentrate on making local honey a little more than I used to. So, does that make sense, Seth, what I said? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're there, Bob. Huh? I'll be there in 40 years. You'll be there in 40 years. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's not going to take you 40. You know, I've had some ups and downs. I had a false start in the middle there where I had to change locations and, you know, got out of the big bee business for about two years there in the middle of it all. And if I... I would have stuck with it and not made that hiccup in the middle. Um, I could be doing even better today. Okay, another yard near Hollywood, Georgia. And something tells me that these bees are full and hot. They're here. See, we put two supers on. I want to say we were here about seven or eight days ago. It might be nine. I have to look in my little notebook. We're just here to check supers and see if we need to get back here with some supers tomorrow. From where I stand, it looks like we probably do, but we're going to have a look. Let's start opening them up, Selene, and see what we got. This is just a spot check. Yeah, they need a super. Okay, we're just going to go through here really fast and see if we got to come back tomorrow. Would you take that off? I want to see what they did with the foundation underneath. We undersupered a, uh, well, we put a foundation on the bottom and a drawn comb on the top. 
and that foundation let's take some of the outer frames out it looks like they're about 95 percent done oh yeah they're real close to being finished and look at the color of that honey sourwood honey so okay let's open just a few more i think i've got the picture already but i want to look at a couple more watch the bees there yeah. Leave that cracked if you would. We should have cracked all of these, honestly. In fact, well, we'll be back first thing tomorrow, so we'll crack them all then. That one is cracked. Okay. Let's see what the foundation box... I, I, I can guess, but let's just... They glue them together. Yeah, that's all I need to see. Okay, we'll be back tomorrow. Nice yard of bees. So, you know, in that last video, I just told her, I cut out three minutes, and I'm gonna put it in another video explaining how we may choose to um, change our business model next year mm -hmm. and do a little less bee splitting and a little more honey yeah. production. Oh, yeah. And uh, honestly, I think I might need therapy or something. <laughs> I, need to, I need to see a counselor because I can't help myself. I just want, we got all those strong colonies down south that are coming off a of honey flow. Mm -hmm. And it's just hard to ignore that. Oh, yeah, to leave them sitting big and not try to. Split oh, them I want to split them all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. We've already done a lot of splitting. Mm -hmm. We've got two or three hundred. I don't know what we got out at the Walmart yard. Two hundred. Oh, yeah. It's about 250, 300 mate nukes. Yeah. You just made 180. You grafted 180 today. Mm -hmm. Next week we could do the same. So we got yards like um, Gibson Road. Mm -hmm. We have the Orchard Road. Mm -hmm. We have the River. I mean, you just you can just follow them all oh, yeah. up from south to north, and they're all ready to split. Mm -hmm. Full of full of bees, and the honey supers are coming off. So, I think we will continue splitting bees for a while. Okay, all right. Yeah. And I've been telling everybody we're done. We're on our last at last graph, but I'm going to take it back. <laughs> <laughs> they hit you right at the last minute, didn't it? It's like, well, oh, I, hey. You know, I was looking at a picture of the bees at Gibson Road that you and I took, and I thought, man, them things are loaded with bees. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, in a month from now, they won't look like that. No, those, no. those bees are going to be gone because the brood nests are beginning to shrink now. But there's still plenty of brood and all those bee bodies, you know, that we can put in nuke boxes and put cells in. So I think we'll continue on for the next two or three weeks. Okay. See if we can get all the nuke boxes filled, which is 500. And we'll use double screen boards on all these things, mm -hmm. which is hundreds. Yeah. And uh, oh, so oh, you want to split them all? Not all, not the whole outfit. But fill up all the all the equipment. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's you all up for that. That's gonna oh, give yeah. me a run for my money, Bob. You about <laughs> to go from like eight hundred to. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I talked to Tommy uh, two Saturdays ago, told him I was downsized, and he just laughed. <laughs> he knows better than that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And we have downsized a lot. We went well, from 2,000 down. Now, we're, I think we're about 1,500 right now, but okay. by the time this is over, we'll, we'll have probably 2,000 units back. Again. Yeah. And the bees that we don't split, I want all the singles to turn into double deeps. We're going to be all this extracted mm -hmm. double deep combs, going to go back on top of singles. Like I told you earlier, I think that uh, uh, rather than put all that deep comb in the cooler for the winter, we should make double deeps out of whatever singles we got. Okay. And that'll give us even more bees for splitting in the spring because a double deep will give you more bees in the spring. Overwintering a double deep will always have more bees in it in the spring than a mm -hmm. single. I don't, I can, lots of theories why, but it's just the way it is. Okay. They're always bigger. Yeah. And we can split them back to a single. You know, we got some singles sold in March, but yes. I'm going to make them a double deep now and then split them back to a single in March, and then we can sell them and have the assets yeah. from the second box left over to make more nukes in the spring. There we go. 
So I'm going to post the video about I'm going to not split so much, and then I'm going to add this to the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be good. Well, I've decided on a change in direction for this yard and several others too. Um, this yard has queens from last year, and anybody that watches my videos much knows I'm an advocate of trying to requeen everything every year. And one of the ways we do that is by splitting yards that um, have queens from the previous year and splitting them up completely and finding the queens and killing them and putting a cell not only in the nukes we make but in the colony below. And we are, we're going to do that to this yard. They're still in good shape. There's still a lot of bees. A month from now they'll have a lot less bees than they do now because the brood nest is beginning to diminish, I should say shrink. And But uh, we got this on the calendar for splitting two weeks from right now, today. And we're grafting the cells on Tuesday to do that with. And as you can see, we've come back and put a, a deep box on these just as we lifted up the honey supers and put an escape board underneath them. The deep box has uh, maybe two or three frames of drawn comb from some deep extracting supers we had. And we added foundation and a gallon and a half feeder which takes the place of uh, two frames. Uh, I was here about four or five days ago looking in these colonies and they were looking pretty good and I decided just to leave them alone instead of giving them a super we just left them alone let them tighten up that that uh, the two supers they got let them more or less plug them out. So we'll make uh, a lot of splits here in this yard. We're gonna, one of the reasons for putting that second deep on there is we're gonna use double screen boards on all these colonies. So not only will the lower box get a queen cell, but the upper one will too. There's 40 or 42 colonies here. So that right there is gonna be maybe 70 or 75 cells. There's a few newer queens in here from this season and we will leave them intact. We won't kill queens from this year, just the ones from last year. And then we'll get a bunch of cells out of here, or uh, excuse me, a bunch of nukes out of here. I scheduled to graft 180 cells just to use with this yard. Between the colonies themselves and the nukes, we'll, we'll take out of here in five frame nuke boxes. I would expect to use all those cells. We'll get a lot of nukes out of here. We've probably got five or six yards that haven't been requeened at all. And I'm going to try to split them all, see if we can get that work done, get a bunch of new queens in them. And not only will it be better for overwintering, they'll, they'll overwinter as a smaller unit because we're splitting them down at this late date, but they'll overwinter good and they'll come out of winter good and they'll grow fast in the spring with those brand new late summer queens. So, uh, made a decent crop here, two supers. It's a lower elevation yard. Uh, this yard's only about maybe 1,500 feet in elevation. Normally we make our best sourwood crops uh, at higher elevations, but this year those yards have gotten so much rain that it's turning out that the lower elevation yards are probably going to have a better average. Um, two supers this year is pretty good for us. We have a lot of colonies that may not make but just a super. And of course, there's a few days left at the northern yards. Um, this yard is finishing up. This camera's probably not going to show it, but right there at the back of the yard is a sourwood tree, and it's really winding down. It's just about done. Up north in North Carolina, we still probably got them about a week left. And, and uh, the rain seems to be diminishing a little bit, so hopefully we'll come ahead up there too. I, I, I'd like to think I'd make two supers of colony up there, but. I'm not sure with all the rain they've seen. It's rained almost every day during the sourwood flow just up until the last couple of days. So sourwood can be precarious. That's why it's not so easy. Not everybody comes here and uh, makes sourwood because it's not simple. A lot of people think they hear about sourwood, they hear about the prices, they bring semi loads of bees up here just to experience a bad season like the one we had last year. Decide maybe sourwood isn't so great after all. It's really really best if you live in the area. It makes it a lot easier to super at the proper time, get the supers off at the proper time, and you know deal with the bees in a good way. It's not like going to North Dakota or South Dakota where you can just sit down yards of bees and come back in a month and collect the honey. A little different here. Sourwood's a little trickier.